In this tutorial, I wanna be showing you how to do a cyberpunk themed logo design. As you can see this week, I've been playing cyberpunk and I've got some inspiration. You can see here, I've got the main logo and graphic they have, which is amazing. I also went on Pinterest and typed in cyberpunk futuristic and they've got a lot of cool stuff. Even like this GIF here is really cool. Look at that, that's dope. Just gonna go back there. So really with the cyberpunk theme, it's really like futuristic, metal, chrome, very sharp shapes. Um, think of like robotics, AI, that type of thing. So very abstract. And I'm gonna create a logo. I'm just in Illustrator. So I've just got an artboard here. I've got the image here for reference. I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different, but just use this as sort of an inspiration. So I love going on Adobe fonts. It's also called Adobe Type Kit as well. And once you go on there, if you have a subscription with Adobe Creative Cloud, you can actually jump on here. And I want you to pay attention to the left-hand side. There's actually a filter. And we can actually search for a certain type of font. And what I'm looking for is something that's like futuristic, right? So right off the bat, I can see here there's a category called futuristic. I'm gonna click that. Now what I'm gonna sort of do is try and find a nice font that sort of represents that vibe of, you know, cyberpunk, um, very edgy, modern type of feel. So you can see this font is kind of nice. We've got some of these other ones that are very condensed um, and techy feeling. I'm just gonna go through here and, and scroll through and see what we can find. A lot of interesting ones here. Um, sneakers, that's kind of a cool font. Uh, ethocentric is good too. Um, I'm gonna click on this one. And the cool thing about this is I can just use these fonts and activate them when I want. So I can just click activate the fonts and it should sync up. So that one is ethocentric and I'll try and look for another one as well. See what we can find. I think this one is called Tachyon. It's not, I like the boldness and the thickness. That's kind of cool. So maybe we'll act, activate that one. And I also liked this other one here. So for Chrome, that looks pretty dope. Yeah, that looks interesting. Cool. So I'm going to activate that one as well. And I'm going to just jump into Illustrator and now my fonts should be synced. So I'm just going to grab my type tool here, drag the swatches off the screen. And as you can see, I want to click this. And then also what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I'm selecting my fonts here. So if I tick this little cloud, it's going to show me all my activated fonts from Adobe Typekit. And hopefully it's already synced. Uh, as you can see here, yeah, sweet. So we've got both of these synced. So I'm gonna drop this in here. I'm gonna type cyber, cyberpunk. Hopefully I can spell it correctly. So this font is kind of cool, very edgy. It's got a nice sort of weight on the crossbars there. So I've got this one. I've got the other one, which is like tachyon. That's pretty dope as well. And then the other one, uh, let's see if we can find it. Sometimes it's, when you have so many fonts, it's, you can find it a challenge to remember which one you got. So where is it? Ethnocentric, beautiful. And you can see they've got a lot of weight and that's why I like using Adobe type fonts or type kit. So, Awesome, we've got these three fonts here, which is looking dope. Um, I think I like all three of them, they all look, look really nice. This one, I think it's a little too round for me for that vibe. So you can see it's very like edgy and sharp. So I'll probably skip this one and just play around with these ones. This one only has four weights, whereas this one has sort of multiple weights, which is probably better. So I'm gonna use this one here, the ethocentric, and we're gonna start to play around with this. So yeah, awesome. I'm gonna type out 2020. I don't wanna obviously copy um, Cyberpunk 2077, but you know, we can play around with this, see what we can come up with. I wanna make it bold. I could do it, make it italic, which is kind of cool. Let me play around, see how we can do it. A bit smaller. And I'm just playing with the weight. So you can see here, I use my mouse wheel to like scroll through the, the weights there. So I think italics, I can do it thin if I want, or just a normal bold italic will probably do fine as well. And that's cool. 
And what I like to do is go to type and go to create outlines and this allows me to edit the, the text. I'm just going to duplicate this, hold Alt and Shift, left click and drag. And now I can start to play with this. Now I'm gonna start to play around and see what we can create. So, you know, I can extend something like that to extend that, that looks kind of cool. And maybe I wanna like bring this down with the E here and sort of match this uh, R here like that. So we start to play around, create something different, Let's create something weird. I might make this a little bit thick. So I'm pressing A for the direct section tool, selecting the points and then just adjusting that like that. And obviously things might not be aligned, but that's all right. We can, we're here to customize, we're here to make things weird. I might just extend this out and then I'm gonna sort of drag this out just to give it some like edginess. And what I like to do sometimes is sort of a good tip for typography is sort of like a line. So you can see I naturally aligned it without even thinking about it, but it's too long. So I'm going to bring this line up so I can use it as a guide and I'm gonna just drag the Y up like that, which is kind of cool. So I know it's sort of matching that, which is kind of nice, which is dope. So that one's that. The C I could play around, maybe make it a bit longer because there's a lot of weird white space here, as you can see. So I like to, I'll just bump, use the arrow keys and bump that across like that. That's kind of cool. Um, and with the Y, maybe I want to extend the Y as well. As you can see there. And I'm just adjusting as I'm going. So I'm just really playing around with the fonts that I've got here and just creating something weird, something interesting. What if I want to do the same thing with this P here? And maybe I want to match it. I could maybe make it the same as the same angle as the R, maybe if I wanted to. To make it like visual, like create that consistency there. I think that's kind of cool. And the Y, I could do the same, make it a bit more sharper. So if I copy the P there, this is a good way on how I sort of make sure that I'm matching so I'm gonna I'm gonna ungroup just so I can move this so you can see I, I try and match it right so it's pretty close so I probably need to just bump the Y down a bit like that and it doesn't have to be perfect right it, it's a it's a logo We're having fun with it um, so I think that's cool might just extend that a little bit the U the U I could probably cut it um, cut it down the middle here. I'm going to quickly align it. And what I like to do is press shift M for the shape little tool. And I'm just gonna minus the middle section. So I'm holding Alt and left clicking just some minusing that, which is really, really cool. So I've got this and then now just to make it a bit more um, edgy, I can do that and just tweak this curve there. So I think that's kind of cool. And I'll do the same to the other side like that. So that's kind of cool. Makes it feel a little bit different. Uh, with the end, I'm gonna extend that a bit and I'm just gonna make it like that, make it sharp. Cyberpunk, it's kind of cool. I could probably extend the K like this and then bring this like that. You know, so it fits sort of in this like little space here. That's, that's kind of cool. Actually, I, I think I like that. So I think I've extended it a bit too much though. So I'm just gonna go back and maybe drop it like there. Make sure that K is extended. And it should be on italic, but a bit smaller. And just drop it like that. But maybe, yeah, maybe we should extend it to the bottom there like this. And I think there's a point here. So I'm just gonna delete the anchor point just to make it more straight and then thin it out because it was a bit too thick. Could um, probably maybe bump that up if I wanted. Depends. It just depends what I want to try and do. And, uh, join this. And I'm just going to go through here. 
see if there's anything that I can you know, edit. I don't want to go too overboard. You can see here plenty of ways we can extend the shapes. So we sort of did the Y, the, the P a little bit, which I think we did extend. Yep. Um, the R, we could extend the R a little bit if we wanted. Yeah, make it like that. Heaps of different ways, but it creates this weird space here. So I want to sort of keep this symmetrical and this so this block is like that block there. I think this is fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little background. Grab the yellow from Cyberpunk, which is cool. And I'm going to bring my swatches panel over here. And I'm going to go look for a nice color. So I'm going to just sort of type, um, the type Cyberpunk. color palette in Pinterest because you know Pinterest always provides what we need so there's heaps of different neon colors here I, which I love I love the pinky purples all the time that's always does really well so I need to find one maybe this palette I'm gonna copy it and just paste it into my illustrator file and then what I like to do is just draw a shape and then I drop up by pressing I and drop these colors in like that. And I think that's really cool. And then what we can do here is, you know, play around with some of these. Right. Hot pink, hot purple. I'm going to unite by going to my shape builder tool. Make sure I select the right one. Um, go to window. And we want to go to Pathfinder. And you click this first one and it should plus all the shapes together. So you can see that some of the shapes, they're not plus. So I can click that just to clean it up a little bit. And then, yeah, I'm going to create outlines for this one bit here. And then now we've sort of got that and we can start to add a little bit of texture. So what I love to do is go to Envato. Let's go Cyberpunk Texture. Uh, I need to go to, it might be in Graphics. Futuristic Texture. You can probably find some different stuff. Ooh, we've got heaps of cool stuff here. Different like polygon backgrounds and shapes and stuff. I think maybe we'll do this one. Yeah, that's kind of trippy. So I'm gonna download this. I'm just gonna copy and paste it in like this. It's in a clip group, so you can see it's in a clip group there. I just want to get rid of the background and I'm gonna bring it over. What I like to do is I go to my transparency panel and typically I like to play around. So I go multiply or color dodge or even overlay should work. I think color dodge works the best here. And you can actually select it and maybe drop the opacity to 80% or, or 50%. And just scale this down like this. And if I wanted to change the colors, then I could, for example, if I want to go back to the, the yellow color there, that could work as well. I'm going to make a duplicate and let's try and blend it on top. No, well, that's not working. Well, overall, it's got a cool vibe and I think We've done a decent job here. You can see here on this type of logo, you can see it's got some like lines and textures and stuff. Um, we could drop another like a different texture on there, um, like a mask. But I think for now, keeping the logo simple and clean is super cool. So thanks so much guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. 
and let me know if you want to see more like this and you know play around with some cyberpunk theme type of designs I always like playing around you can always create something so interesting so yeah thanks for watching the tutorial hope you got some cyberpunk inspiration and i look forward to making another tutorial on design and illustration talk to you soon have a good one